I'm gonna show you how I built a Wordle clone using Svelte Kit. What's up everyone? My name is James Key Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics and I am a big fan of Svelte slash Svelte Kit. It's one of my favorite frameworks. You may have seen a couple of my videos on Svelte on this channel. If you did, I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, but I'm going to tell you about how I use Svelte to build a Wordle clone. Wordle was this incredibly popular uh, game that is relatively simple that you probably have heard of, but basically you get six guesses to guess a five letter word and Wordle will give you feedback on which letters are correct in the right spot uh, in the word, but not in the right spot and then not in the word at all. And it ended up getting acquired by New York Times for like a million or some number of millions. I don't know the exact number of dollars. If you do, let me know in the comments below. But I thought this was a really good story. And so I wanted to take uh, just learning experience to play around with Svelte and build a Wordle clone myself. Uh, so here is mine. I'm going to uh, refresh and show you what it looks like from the beginning. So uh, it has the pop up uh, exactly like Wordle does to show you how to play. You can get rid of this pop up by clicking on the X or by clicking out here. I'll tell you how I built that component in a second. And then you have the game board up here and the keyboard at the bottom. So if I wanted to guess uh, a word like break, uh, I could type. So there's B-R-E and then I could also click A and K for uh, mobile devices as well. And when you enter, uh, you get feedback. So gray means it's not in the word at all. A means uh, or green means it's in the right position and the right letter. And if you were to get something um, like uh, a yellow here, uh, that means that it is in the word, but that is not the right position. And then also these things update. Another cool thing uh, that you probably already saw is these animations of like kind of showing progressively showing you which one of these words is in the right spot anyway. So if you haven't played Wordle, you can go and check for it. Uh, but you have a link to the description in the description below to the GitHub repo. And this is just going to be kind of a walkthrough of how I built this. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to build this, uh, let me know and I can do that as well. The last thing I'll mention is I'm working on a course, uh, everythingsvelt.com with my podcast co-host Amy, which we will go really in depth with Svelte Kit and Superbase and testing and Stripe and all kinds of stuff. So check that out at everythingsvelt.com. That'll be ready in the next two months or so. So let's go ahead and dive into the code. Now, the biggest thing in here is uh, the how do we store game state and you can see this is a little bit of a long file and that's because there's a lot that we have to keep track of so we have to keep track of the current uh correct word we have to keep track of the user's guesses so we store this in an array because a user can guess uh five letters per guess and can guess six times so that's a two-dimensional array an array of arrays and inside of the inner array is five different uh characters so we store that. We also store the current word index and the letter index so that we know exactly which number guess the user's on, which word guess they're on, and then within that word, what letter they're on so that we can help populate uh, populate that. Then we have a game state for uh, playing, for um, new player, for one and loss. And then we have the letter statuses, and this is how we determine what colors to show on the keyboard down here because the status down here is slightly different than what's up here. If you look, uh, the A here is yellow, uh, but we've had it in the right spot as green. So that overrides uh, to be green down below. So you have to keep track of that state separately. So lots of cool stuff right there. Now, the way this game works by default, like the regular one, is it stores all this stuff in local storage. So if we go and look inside of our uh, console here and go into application, and then local storage, we can bring this out. You see, we've got uh, all those things also saved in local storage. So game state, the guesses, string, current word index, the session ID. We don't do login in this. We just generate a new UID or a new ID for users as they come to play. We store that in local storage. The current letter index and then the last date uh, that the user played. So you can see that this maps up with the setters that I have in here for user ID, user guesses array, current letter index, current word index, game state, etc. So these are just helper functions that I created to not only update the piece of information that I need in state, but also update local storage as well. Now, if you didn't notice, these, uh, most of these, all of these are using uh, writable in Svelte. 
So the way Svelte stores work is they're kind of a centralized place that you can store data and functions for accessing that data or updating that data. So in this case, all of these are writables, which means these can be accessed in all the different components that we have. Uh, for example, let's pull out one of the one of the individual components. On the keyboard, we reference the letter statuses. So that's one of the things that we use these letter statuses to determine what sort of uh, background color are we going to uh, show for those. So this BG class here is a function, a reactive function that looks at the individual letter or we, it, we iterate through the individual letter, pass it into this BG class function and then determine based on this mapping of what, uh, what color that should be in Tailwind. So if we look at one of these, uh, we didn't mention we're using Tailwind, but this has a BG dash green of 500 to give it that green color. So because we are using writables, we're able to access these pieces of state all over the place. So we have a few places, uh, a few setters. Then we have loaders, which are kind of the opposite of that, where we want to load game state or information from local storage and have some defaults. So you see we have load game state. If we don't uh, get anything, we just set it as playing. So which kind of makes sense. We'll go ahead and start the user as playing. Notice also that uh, we're referencing these constants. So let's go into the constants file. And this is where we have a bunch of different things to help organize different pieces of game state. So these are basically enums. Enums are, I've got a video on this that you can check out, uh, but enums are a defined list of values for the different game state. New player, playing, win, and lose. And then you freeze that thing to make sure that it stays exactly like it is uh, for the entirety of the code that's running. We've got letter statuses to uh, background color map. So we take these different uh, letter states, which is another enum here, and then map that to colors inside of Tailwind. We have the alphabet, we have the keyboard rows array. This is the letters that show up down here. So because I have this in an array, um, I can just programmatically generate this keyboard by iterating through each row of the keyboard uh, array and then in inside of each row we have each letter and then we can print those out and then we handle checks that we'll talk about in a second if it's enter we call guess word if it's delete we call delete word if it's not any of those we just call guess letter because they're typing in a new letter so we go ahead and guess that letter and then we have some constants for the max number of letters guesses um, keys for our local storage and uh, then we export all that stuff. Now, this is maybe a little bit overkill, but I think just some some uh, good way to organize all the different pieces of state and constants that we have into a single file so that we can reference those and not be hard coding stuff uh, all over the place. So otherwise, in the game store, we load all these different uh, pieces of state. Now, the interesting thing is I am loading the current word from let's see, in answers.js uh, array. This has about 3,000, 2,000, 3,000, about 2,300 words in it. And I just searched online to get this and I just copied them into an array and there's my answers array. So these are the potential answers to the game, but there's also the potential guesses and this one has like 12,000. So this has, as you can imagine, like the plural of lace, it ends in an S. That's not gonna be, an answer, but it could be a guess in this case. So I, again, I just searched, found 13,000 of these, it's a big file. And so for now, when I get a random word, I'm just choosing a random index uh, from that array and then uh, returning the string, the word at that index and then uppercasing it. So that's how we get our random word. Now, eventually I would like to move this to the back end and take advantage of API endpoints in SvelteKit do encryption of that data back and forth so the user can't read it. And uh, anyway, but this is realistic to how the game is actually done or close to realistic. Uh, the one thing I'm missing is a hashing algorithm to say, I think the way Word, Wordle does it is they take the current date and then somehow hash that to a number index uh, of the word in the array. So I have to figure that out. If you have a suggestion for that, leave that in the comments below as well. So we load the current word, we load the guessers, or the guessers, the guesses, user guesses array, the user ID, current letter index, word index. And those two are, again, to track which guess number we're on and which letter they're guessing. So we have functionality. So I mentioned these functions earlier inside of keyboard. We have guess word, delete letter, and guess letter. 
And uh, we start with guest letter. When we guess a letter, we want to make sure that it fits in the number of letters that we're allowing. So if I've already filled up all five of these and I type in another letter, nothing is going to happen. So we, we handle that. And then we update the guesses array uh, by adding in the letter input as its uppercase value. And then we update that in local storage and then uh, return the previous value. So this is how we update uh, data that is writable. Now, what's cool is uh, because this is a writable inside of our word input component, this is actually referencing the user guesses array. This gets the letters in the index of the current uh, word that we're on and then uh, displays the letter input for each of those. We'll talk about that in a second. Delete letter is similar. We take away a letter. Uh, we also check to make sure that we actually have a letter before we delete one. And then guess word is where some of this big logic comes in. So we have a display alert. We'll come back to that. Uh, but we basically want to check to see, is this word uh, the correct word? And then we also want to check uh, based on, I think the get updated game state, I think the display feedback. Yeah, the display feedback. This is a function that uh, checks to see if we won or lost and then uh, generates that uh, image. And then uh, we have a way to automatically, as we increase our current word index, as we increase that plus one, so we move down to the next row, uh, this will automatically pick up and kind of show the uh, results. So remember, as I type this in and press enter, now it's showing the results for that line because we are already past that line. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, let's actually talk about that now. So the initialize game just kind of loads all that initial information. And there's some other things in here, a reset, checking to see if the user has played. But let's go into the letter input. And so what we have here is we first create this Boolean show results. And basically what show results is, is we're checking to see if the letter that we're displaying in this component, if that letter is on a word that we have already guessed. So the current word index is greater than the index of the word that this letter is in, meaning it's already been guessed. Then we want to actually show uh, the feedback on that letter. And we do this with these different colors inside of Tailwind, which works out well. Now, the cool thing is the way we get these animations, again, I'll show you this. Notice that this animates across is we're uh, showing with if and if else, we're showing different pieces of information based on the state of whether or not we should show the uh, actual feedback. So when we show the feedback, so this check here of if the word index is less than the current word index, we do this in fade. So we add this fade in effect and we add in the delay based on the letter index. This I think is really cool. So now we see that these progressively show the feedback. So P, L, A, T, E, and you get that cool effect, which is what Wordle does. So this is using built-in uh, transitions inside of Svelte, which I think is cool as well. So you can see that comes in there. And then otherwise we display another uh, different piece, something, uh, something different for these letters if we uh, don't need to be showing that feedback. Uh, so that is the letter input. And then a couple of things that I wanted to call out, we also have, let's say we try to guess too short of a word. Notice we have this pop-up alert here. Now this comes from the game store and let's call uh, display, let's go to the display feedback function. Display feedback, uh, no, that's not what we want. Um, let's see, what was that message that we just saw? Not enough letters, let's search for that. Not, uh, not there we go. So display alert is the function that we're calling. So what I did was create an alert store. Again, another piece of uh, store or state that is referenceable anywhere. It has the different types of alerts that we can do, danger, info, and success. This is kind of exactly what um, like Bootstrap does, for example. And we have two pieces of data, an alert message and an alert type. So we export this display alert function which sets those two, the type and the message, and then looks for a reset to uh, get rid of the message if we pass in that reset time. So you can see here, we pass in uh, the message, the type, and then two seconds as our threshold. Now from there, we also have the alert component. Now I'm gonna build, I'm gonna do a dedicated video on uh, how I set this up. So if you have questions, you can ask here and keep an eye out for a video coming up soon. But this will actually uh, show, I don't need this anymore. Uh, this will actually determine what the background color is based on the alert type. 
And then we'll just display that message if there is one, which means this disappears if the alert message gets set back to an empty string. Cool. So that's how the alerts work. Um, you can see that this gets referenced inside of the index.svelte. So it just sits there. Is If it has a message, it displays. If not, it goes away. And then we also have, if we come back uh, and we lose, uh, oh, if we type in a real word and we lose, now we have, oh, actually we don't have a pop-up message there, just a, just that message. So let's go back to application and clear all this out and then refresh. Uh, we see we get this pop-up overlay. So what this is, is inside of the overlay, I've done a video on this if you want more details as well, is we have, uh, takes up the entire screen. Uh, so it just sits on top of everything. It has uh, a button to handle the close, but it also has stop propagation if you click on the div itself. So what that means is I can click on this X button to remove this. I could also click outside of this to remove it, but if I click on it, notice that that doesn't remove it. So there's some stop propagation there, which I think is neat to only handle closes in the correct spot that we want to. So again, if we get rid of all this and refresh, um, I can't click here, I can click off and I can click the X to make that go away. And so the pop-up, uh, similar to the alert, just sits inside of the, uh, the thing here with the uh, overlay component. And then it just checks the game state. If it's a new player, do an overlay and then pass in this new player info. And that gets displayed based on this slot. So children components basically become the slot that we reference inside of the overlay component. Uh, so that's most of what is here. Uh, I had a ton of fun working on this. Again, if you'd like to know uh, in more detail how to build this, if you'd like to build this from scratch in a tutorial, let me know because I think that would be a lot of fun. Also, make sure to uh, check out Everything Svelte. This will be live uh, sometime in late July. But uh, using Svelte and SvelteKit and Vercel and uh, testing at GitHub Actions and Tailwind and Stripe and Superbase and Auth and all the things that you could really want to do uh, in that course. So uh, make sure to check that out at Everything Svelte. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you watching it and I'll catch you next time.